Hey guys, Mo Trapper. Uh, I'm gonna post some video after this. I just kind of took it in pieces, but it is of uh, uh, my trap dying and dipping uh, this year. So get to it a little earlier than than usual, but it's starting to get hot already. So I'm gonna be start uh, starting to make wax sand here pretty soon. It it needs to be in the 80s at least, I think, uh, for the wax sand to to go pretty well. And we're already there, so um, I figured I might as well get the traps knocked out. That way, I can focus on making wax sand. But uh, but anyway, <clears throat> I'll show you a few little uh, pieces of the process. But it's it's pretty simple. And of course, this you know there's there's many many ways to prepare traps. Um, I would say, <clears throat> you know, the one thing that you really need to do uh, if you do nothing else is degrease the traps. So you gotta get them in hot water. Uh, you can run them through a dishwasher. You can boil them in plain water. You can use vinegar. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to degrease traps, but you need to degrease them. The, the oil that comes on them from the factory is to keep them from rusting, obviously, uh, in shipment or sitting on a shelf somewhere. But that, that it does have a smell to it, and it, you know, it's, it won't allow the trap to rust which is what you actually need. It's kind of counterintuitive, but you need the trap to rust a little bit in order to take dye. If, it, if there's no rust on it, it really won't take dye very well. So other than that though, there's really a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. I'm gonna show you, and I, I, sh I had a video uh, last year about this time that I showed how I do it, um, but there's a bunch of ways to do it. So what I do, um, I use logwood trap dye. I throw them in there. Um, for 15 minutes, 20 minutes at, at a low boil, kind of a simmer. Uh, pull them out, let them dry, take them right over and dip them in full metal jacket, and then hang them up and let them dry. Um, you can paint the traps and dip them in full metal jacket. You can, um, you can dye them and wax them. You could paint them and wax them. You could use Oh, there's about a half a dozen at least different speed dips and speed dyes that you could use. Some of them are kerosene based, some of them are water based. There's a whole bunch of different things you could do. And I, I only have experience with what I'm doing, the, the process that I show you and have showed you uh, before, um, and it works for me. So that, that's what I do. Um, not saying that the other ones are bad or, or don't work or anything like that. To be honest with you, I've never tried anything else. And I don't know why I even adopted the system that I do. I just, you know, there were a bunch of, of uh, things that you could do with traps to protect them. I wanted to make sure they were protected. That's why I wanted to dye them. Um, <clears throat> but when it came to waxing, I just didn't like that idea. I didn't want, the biggest thing is my traps are stored mostly uh, in a garage and it gets really hot in the summertime in that garage. And I didn't want to wax the traps and have that trap, have that wax then melt off the traps in the totes that I keep them in. I don't know that that would have happened, but I, I just, I feel like that is a possibility. So I never, I never wanted that to happen. And the other thing is being stored in a garage, cars moving in and out, lawnmowers running, so on and so forth. I didn't want that wax to collect a smell because I know that wax, you know, can kind of hold a smell. Uh, so I, I, you know, with the exhaust and just all the different things that go on, uh, I didn't want it to sit out there and either you know, the wax melt off of them and not be waxed by the time I got around to using them or the wax still be on them, but actually kind of be holding a bunch of smells that I didn't want on them. So I felt like the, this, the uh, full metal jacket dip was a better solution for me. So anyway, I just wanted to go through what I do, why I do it. Uh, it's worked great for me. So it is what it is. If you like it, great. If you do something else and it works for you, keep on rocking it, man. But anyway, that's it. And like I said, after this, I'll show you just a few little snippets of the process. So thanks. All right, so we're back again, yet another year of uh, boiling traps and logwood trap dye. Um, I wanted to just show you one little tip, which may, I think some other people have shown it before too, and uh, it may, you know, be evident to you uh, just thinking about it, but it wasn't evident to me at first. So. Uh, whenever I string these up, you know, I've got a lot of different levels, a lot of different swivels between my shock springs and the swivels that are on the trap. So I run the wire through at different levels so that they hang at different levels. And that way when they drop down into the pot, there's room for them to kind of move around. 
uh, if you hang them all at the same level, you know, if I were to run this wire through the same swivel on all four traps, uh, they just kind of bunch up at the bottom and it's hard to get them to, to go down into the pot correctly and it's hard to get them to all submerge. So that's just one little trick I've learned, you know, run that through different levels of your chain uh, so that they're all hanging at different levels so when they go down to the pot it's much easier for them to just kind of you know get out of each other's way and get down in there so you don't end up with this you know big chunk that's just stuck at one spot and you can't get them all down in there so so this is the the, the logwood die cold creek logwood die for traps um, i got it from f and t uh, i had been using this logwood concentrate uh, and it works fine i've still got a little bit left uh, but i figured i would i needed some more so i bought this i figured i would run this on the first go around here just to see how it does i think it'll be fine i've never heard uh you know anybody have any major problems with any brand of logwood trap that but anyway that's what i'm using just so you know so these are the totes that i use to store my traps in and to haul them around um, in the back of the truck and uh so last year uh, before the season I, I decided that i was going to keep some of these totes separate and as I pulled, I was going to keep track of the traps that had caught critters and the ones that hadn't caught anything. And I said the ones that hadn't caught anything, I was going to just carry them through to next season. If they hadn't, you know, caught any critters at all, they should have been, you know, clean and, and died and dipped in full metal jacket. They should have been just fine. And I should be able to just carry those through to the next season because they wouldn't have any, you know, animal odors on them. As long as I kept them separate from the other traps, it should be fine. And of course, the first time I pulled a big line, um, <laughs> that all went out the window. And I was just, you know, chucking them into the same bins. And I, you know, it's just one of those things where sometimes you don't have the time to be as organized as you would like to be. So uh, they all ended up going into mixed totes with uh, traps that had caught and traps that hadn't caught. So here we are, <laughs> dying everything again. But uh, but anyway, I do have some totes over there with some with some uh, traps that were not used at all, and those I'm just going to leave. Obviously, you know they haven't left the tote basically since they were last um, dyed and dipped in Full Metal Jacket, so those are going to stay. Uh, if I have to dig into those, you know there's some MB450s and some traps that I don't use all that much, but if I need traps in the middle of the season uh, because they all get you know funked up, uh, I can I can grab those and, and use those, but. So here we are, you know, <laughs> dying and dipping everything again uh, because I didn't, uh, you know, really take the time to note what had made what catches and so on and so forth and keep them separated. So uh, my advice, even though I didn't follow it myself, is uh, get a couple extra totes like this if this is something that you want to do, if this is the way you want to handle your traps. Get a couple extras that are empty and, you know, I would even, which I should do too, I would even write on top, you know, uh, catch traps or something or dirty traps and then write clean traps on, the, on another lid that way you know <clears throat> as you pull you can throw them into the appropriate bins and that way you only have to die and dip traps that have actually made catches and are going to have scent contamination whereas a lot of these traps I, you know I didn't make any catches on well actually a lot of them I did I probably did make catches on the majority of them it was probably only a handful that didn't make catches um, most of them weren't coyotes, most of them were possums and other, other stuff, raccoons, but those still are going to stink up your traps, so you still need to dye them uh, and dip them after a catch of, of pretty much anything. But anyway, that's how I'm doing it. That's why we're in this mess. <laughs> it's all my fault as usual, and, uh, and that's it. Thanks. So you guys have seen this all before, um, but as you guys, anybody that watches the channel and has seen my dying and dipping video from last year, I dip them in full metal jacket after they're dyed. I just run it in that tub, swish it around to the corner, dunk them in, roll them around, make sure they get completely wet, <clears throat> and then I hang them up. And you can see that back row. So the ones uh, closest to us here, these four, and these four here are Canine Extreme Juniors, but those four, and then those eight on the back row there, those are Dukes, Duke 550s, and they're new. Um, if you guys watch my, you know, episodes from last year, 
last trapping season, I put those in the uh, dishwasher and ran them through a dishwashing cycle to degrease them. And then I took them out and set them. I didn't dip them in anything. I just washed them in the dishwasher and that was it. And they were starting to get a light coat of rust by the end of the season, some of them more than others because they've been out in the elements more. But they are absolutely black as coal now. I mean, this, uh, this dye is, uh, is the best as far as coloring the traps that I've used so far. So that liquid stuff that I used did a pretty good job, but uh, nothing like this. I mean, these things are just really black. They really took the dye well. So I don't know if it was how I prepared them or this dye, but they, they definitely took the dye well. And you can also see here that that it's kind of a purplish color. I mean, my tub's kind of purplish, so I think it's taken on a little bit of that, but the liquid itself is a little bit purpley too. And I think that's from that uh, liquid dye that I used last year. It just had a purpley kind of a color to it. I'm not sure where that comes from, but uh, this is, I think, the third run. So this will be the third time I have uh, dipped traps in this particular gown, a full metal jacket, and I just dump it right back into the container. Um, you know, you lose a little bit every time because some of it stays on the traps and ends up dripping off, but you can get a lot of traps dipped in one layer of full metal jacket um, if you just reuse it. And I haven't had any problems, you know, reusing it. It's, uh, it works just as well as it did the first time that I dipped them in there. So there you go. Thanks. So this is kind of interesting. Um, I did all my traps uh, that I used last year, dyed and waxed. I think it's uh, one, two, three, four, like four dozen total, something like that. But uh, anyway, I got this Duke 550 right here, right? And it's still a little purpley looking from the Full Metal Jacket because it's still wet with it. But do you see how shiny it is? So that's a Duke 550 back there. And it's as black as night, right? Took the dye beautifully. Everything really took the dye really well, except this one, Duke 550. And I was like, what in the world happened? And then I remembered, I bought this one to do the review on, the original review that I did on the Duke 550. I never degreased this trap. It just got thrown in with everything else. When I bought those back there, I put them in the dishwasher. And I talked about how that's all I did to them. I just put them in the dishwasher and degreased them and then took them out and set them. So there's your difference right there, guys. Uh, if you don't degrease them because you forget, because you're a dummy like me, uh, and then you go to dye them, you're basically gonna get a bright silver trap that doesn't take any dye. But if you degrease them and let them rust, they're gonna look like that. And that's what you want because you wanna make sure that you're protecting the, the trap. So this one will be just fine. I'm not gonna do anything else with it. I, I, it's already dipped in full metal jacket. It'll be just fine this season. It'll rust a little bit this season. And next season when I dye it, it's gonna look more like these guys over here because it'll take the dye a lot better. But just so you know, uh, if you don't degrease and you don't let them rust a little bit and you go through the trouble of dyeing them, this is what you're going to get. So I think if you're not going to uh, degrease them, you're better off just dipping them in full metal jacket because it's basically the same thing. So anyway, there you go. Thanks.